All right, I'm back. Well, when I was making my rear ballast for my tractor, Houseman One wanted to know what welder I bought because I, uh, in that video, I mentioned that I bought a welder for the barn up here, and this is the one I bought. This is the name. I paid cash for it out of my piggy bank money. I don't have any sponsorship with this. I'm not involved with these people one bit at all. So that's my disclaimer. This just happened to be the cheapest one I could find on eBay. And it was, uh, I think, $85 delivered. Uh, the reason I bought this rather than uh, the Harbor Freight one was because, uh, well, Harbor Freight has two heat settings, high and low. And that's it, I believe. On this one here, you have four settings. You got mini, minimum one, minimum two, max one, max two. And that's why I bought this one here. And uh, this here, this will adjust your feed of your wire. What I found is when I put it on max and number one over here, and I have a wire feed of three, it works out real good when I'm welding eighth inch steel. So, uh, and if you watch my past videos, you know I can't leave well enough alone. I have to modify everything I own or buy, so I'm going to get into the modifications. Now I don't, well, I'll tell you what, let me explain what comes with it first. Uh, you get a spool of wire, it's, I think, maybe a, a pound, maybe two pounds of it, depending on which one you buy. <coughs> throw that, oh, don't throw it out. Use that to practice. That is junk wire. You're not going to be happy. If you get a good weld with it, you're going to get a better weld when you buy some better wire. Let's put it that way. That's, uh, just use it to practice, and then go out and get yourself a spool of some good wire. I'm not going to recommend any wire. A lot of people use Lincoln, uh, but I, I'm not going to recommend anyone in particular. Uh, what comes with it is this little Mickey Mouse brush and hammer. Uh, when you weld with this uh, flex core weld, you're going to get flux. No, not flux, excuse me. You're going to get a scale. What you have to do, you have to beat that scale off then scrape it with this to clean it up. Uh, you cannot weld over scale, so uh, don't stop and then go back and try and weld over it without cleaning it. Uh, you're going to get a lot of splatter. It's an AC welder, it's not a DC welder. And it's uh, one of the things that happens with AC welding, you get a lot of splatter. A little trick on the splatter. Whatever you're going to weld, spray the surrounding surface with PAM. Or you can go out and you can spend uh, 15 bucks for a, a bottle of uh, anti-splatter stick or whatever it's called. And you spray it on. But Pam does the same thing. And as we all know, you can get that for about 2 or 3 bucks, uh, depending on where you shop. And that's a little trick there that will help keep the splatter off of, off of your parts. Uh, you're going to need a grinder to clean up. Okay. Oh, you <laughs> forgot. You're going to get a mask. The only thing this mask is good for is solar eclipse. Just toss it out. It's not worth anything unless you want to watch the solar eclipse. I went to Harbor Freight and I bought this mask here. I got it on sale for $34, $37, whatever it was. It's auto darkening. There's not a thing wrong with it. You don't have to spend a whole ton of money. Uh, the lenses here to protect your uh, your uh, screen there is plastic lens or what acetate or whatever it's called. Uh, go to a hobby store and get yourself a four by three or a two by three foot sheet of this stuff. And then you're only going to pay about five, maybe seven bucks for it. And if they've got one that's in the bin that's cracked. Ask them for a discount. That's how I got mine. Mine uh, had a crack in one corner. And uh, they gave it to me for 50% off. I think I paid 3 bucks for the whole sheet. And then I cut my own. If you're going to buy these from Harbor Freight, you're going to pay a ton of money. I forget 5 6 bucks for a couple of these things. So 
So that's uh, another little thing that you may want to look into, uh, how to save some money. All right, modifications. As you all know, I modify everything. Oh, the other thing I have it in my hand. While you're, if you're at Harbor Freight, buy at least a pack of 10 tips. I use 35. I'm running 30, oh, 30 uh, wire or 30 thousandths, depending on who you talk to. Uh, but I buy th oh, 035 tips. That way there, the wire doesn't hang up in it. But you're, go you're going to need a pack of these. Because in the beginning, when you first start welding, what's going to happen is you're going to, you're more than likely you're going to stick the tip to the wire here, and then you're going to have to undo it and replace it. So I, I would lay in a stock of them. I have 20 of them myself. That way, there I don't have to worry about running out. Uh, okay, I guess we we'll get into the modifications now. Yeah. On this welder here, now the Harbor Freight welder, the wire isn't hot. And what I mean by that is, on your handle here, when you turn the machine on, you have to pull the trigger to start welding to make the wire hot to weld with. On this welder here, the wire is hot. So in other words, if you touch this to something that's grounded without pulling the trigger, you're going to get a spark. Which if you don't have your helmet on and, or in, in place, then uh, there's a good chance you're going to get a flash of your eyes. And uh, trust me, you don't want to do that. You can go blind if you watch uh, welding and you get a lot of flash, you can burn your retinas out. So what we did here, well, one thing here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's a transformer in here that we added. It's a 110, uh, 24 volt transformer. And I don't know a whole lot about electrical. Uh, so I had my buddy Jim come over and uh, wire it for me. What was happening was, when you pull the trigger, it activates the, your uh, drive gear up here, which robs or, uh, electricity, volts, w amps, whatever it is. From this unit here so they're both fighting each other as you're going back and forth this wants to work this wants to work it's going back and forth and you're just robbing yourself electricity there or amperage and I say I have my buddy Jim if anybody's interested in how he wired this up it's really simple unfortunately it wasn't simple for me because I wasn't watching when he did it a whole lot I just knew he was gonna do it right so now, when I pull the trigger, this here energizes the drive motor over here to fit, that feeds your wire. And it doesn't take anything away from uh, your wire, the amperage going to your wire, I guess. So that's why he wired that in for me. And the other uh, modification that we made, we added a relay up here. Now, I'm not going to get into how it was wired in. Uh, like I say, uh, Jim would have to explain that to you. But what happens now is, when I pull the trigger, then the wire gets hot. So, as long as... Uh, now, what I can do, I can touch this to whatever is grounded, and it won't arc until I pull the trigger, which is a safety factor that I wanted on this thing here, because I'm used to... Uh, at my shop there when I weld, I'm used to laying my gun down on the table and uh, it's been uh, grounded to and uh, I don't get a spark with this here. I make a mistake and I get a flash. So that's why we added that. Which uh, to me, this, un this unit here and uh, that unit in there are the two most important things. I would, if you're going to do a modification on this thing, this is the one I would make. That way there you're going to get a much better weld. So that's the, that's the first one I would make. Then if you're worried about getting flashing, I'd add a, a, a relay up here to it. Uh, I say you get a, a spool that sits up on top here and these things are expensive. You're buying two pounds of this, so I think it's, uh, I'm not even, eight, ten, twelve bucks, whatever it is. Now, what I went out and did, 
I bought a 10 pound spool here and I took the unit that used to be in here and I mounted it to the, the bracket I made. I drilled a hole uh, let me see if I can get it over here. And then what I did, I drilled a hole and put a grommet on it. So now I don't have to worry about running out of wire for a long time. Plus it's a lot cheaper doing it this way. I tried to wind that wire up to here and it was just taking forever. So that's why I came up with this idea here. Uh, okay, I, like you say, uh, I'm not being sponsored by these people. Uh, I'm getting no money for it. As you know, my videos are free. So I just thought I'd make this for Houseman, uh, Houseman 1. Uh, I know he'll watch this and uh, see the video on it. So uh, that's why I wanted to make it for him. I'm sorry, uh, late making this thing, but uh, life got in the way of uh, making the movie or the video. Uh, you can weld, probably you can get away with welding half inch steel. If you know what you're doing, uh, you put a good chamfer on it, you're going to have to make multiple passes to, to make the weld. But uh, half inch, you can do it, but you're going to have to do some work prior to it. You may have to preheat the steel, depending on what type of steel you're using. So, uh, but a quarter inch. Maybe two passes, eighth inch, not a problem. Uh, now, if, for car panels, do a lot of practicing on the car panels before you try and start to weld on them. Because it's pretty easy to burn 30,000 metal. It's pretty easy to burn a hole right through it. So, I'll, I think I've talked about as much as I can about this thing here. Oh, definitely get yourself one of these magnetic these things are great they come in handy uh get yourself a good hammer this is a welding hammer here uh this part here holds the, the wire brush uh get yourself an extension cord they recommend not a lot not any longer than 25 feet uh get at least 12 gauge if you can get a 10 gauge uh, extension cord all the better okay oh yeah you're gonna get a tip now this tip screws on to uh, excuse me bear with me here all right now you're gonna get a tip that screws on to the end here you don't need that tip that tip is uh, useless. Uh, this is set up for gas. This is not a gas. This is not a true MIG welder. MIG, uh, MIG welder seals the, the cable or the wire with whatever type of gas you need, to, depending on what you're welding. And so you don't need this tip here whatsoever. You can use it if you want. Uh, what you're going to find out, if you use it, you're going to get a lot of buildup in here of uh, uh, splat, or, uh, well, you're going to get a lot of buildup on it. Uh, I'm lost for words at the moment. So, I don't, I don't bother using it. Uh, get yourself some neat, uh, some dip for the nozzle. Uh, that helps keep the uh, splatter off of the tip here. Or you can spray it with Pam. Okay, I think I've covered just about everything there is that I've done to this thing. Uh, the only thing left to do is, ah, uh, let's see. Uh, transformer, 15 bucks. Relay, $15. So I have $30 into it. So what, I'm at a uh, buck 10 on this unit here. The only other thing that uh, you can do is make it a DC welder. And I don't think I'm going to spend the extra, I think somebody mentioned on one of their other videos that did it, right around another 60 bucks. If I was going to put that kind of money into this, I just would have got a bigger welder. But this 110 welder, uh, I'm happy with it. It'll weld everything I need it to do, and uh, now that I've played around with it, 
I can lay down a real nice bead, I show you, but it doesn't mean anything because uh, your welds are going to be different than mine. Mine will be different from yours. Uh, it all depends on how much you've welded, what your experience is. So, uh, I guess I'm going to shut this thing down for the day. And uh, as always, my videos are free. Thank you for watching.